In this video, we will be discussing some tips and tricks that you can do with Ruby vSphere Console, otherwise known as RVC, for vSAN that will make it easier to manage your vSAN environment. So here we have a Virtual Center appliance that we have logged into using SSH. We will start by running the RVC command so we can drill down into the vSAN cluster in order to run the commands that we'll be showing you today. So when we first log in, we'll be shown a prompt that we have to drill down into. So we always start with localhost, data center level, computer, because we want to go into host. So that's number one. And then the cluster. And we're effectively at the cluster. So the first command we're going to be running, demonstrating to you today, is the vSAN distats command. This command is great if you want to capture a nice high-level overview of the health of your vSAN disk groups. Here, you have an insight into a number of disks per disk group, the types of disks being used, the number of vSAN components that live on each disk, as well as the use capacity on a per disk basis, or even the vSAN file system version. This is especially useful if you encounter an out-of-space message in Virtual Center, because you can see that any, if any of the disks are physically full. So here you have the use capacity reserved total. So you get a nice little percentage here that gives you that information. Next, we're going to run the vSAN check state command. And this command is particularly useful if you want to ensure that your virtual machine objects are in a healthy state. So here you can see we have zero inaccessible objects. We have no invalid or accessible VMs. Otherwise, they would show up in a list down here. And all of our VMs are in sync, otherwise they would show up here. So this is a this is what you ideally want to see from this test. Now this next command is probably familiar to most people who have poked around at RVC before. When RVC is rebuilding objects or enforcing storage policies, you're able to get a breakdown of how long the sync operation will take on a per object basis. Um, the information we're going to show you here on resync dashboard. is also available in the vSphere web client. So here, because we're running this at the cluster level, it's querying all the VMs in this vSAN cluster from the perspective of this host. And here you can see we have no VMs that are currently being synchronized. So our cluster is pretty quiet from a resync perspective. Now the next command we're going to be showing you is called vSAN what if host failures. And this command here is particularly useful if you're doing capacity planning on your vSAN cluster. So this provides a simple way to understand how your vSAN capacity resources will be utilized if a hypothetical host failure were to occur. The default number of hosts to simulate in this test is one, so essentially one host failure. Uh, but with the dash n flag, you can actually configure this for multiple hosts in the cluster. So since our example cluster is only three nodes, we can only support one host failure. However, with a five node cluster, we could technically tolerate up to two failures. So to scale this further, you'll want to remember a simple algebraic formula, which is 2n plus 1 to help you plan accordingly. And the n represents the number of failures. So if you plug that in, it'll tell you how many hosts you need to tolerate how many failures you're looking for in your cluster. So here is the what if host failures command. You can see way this works, usage right now, currently we are 16% overall capacity with 1% of our components used, 13,386 available. Uh, recache reservations, we're not using any, but we could use up to 104.99. And after a hypothetical host failure, we would be up to 24% used because we would essentially have reduced capacity with the same amount of components. And you can see our component count dropped and our read cache count dropped as well. Now, just to demonstrate the dash n flag, you can do a dash help if you're unsure. And here you can see dash n. There's also a few other options as well, but this is the most particularly useful one. Now, this next feature that we're going to discuss today is a vSAN health plugin. 
So this has been available for use since the release of vSAN 6.0. And as you can see, there are many command line options when interacting with the HealthCheck plugin. And the way we can show you this is if we just tab it a couple times, it'll show you what's available. And there is a lot of stuff here, just way outside the amount of time we're going to have for this video today. However, we will take a look at one that I find to be the most useful command, which is the vSAN health summary command. We'll run that against the cluster. This will typically take a few seconds to complete because it's just running a little test and validating the health of the cluster. So here you can see the results of the health check. So cluster health is in a good state. And this is a quick way that we can get a nice state from RVC to get a good overall picture of the health of the VC cluster. As you can see, the majority of the tests show a successful pass rate with the exception of the HCL health section. Now this will typically fail if the HCL database that vSAN uses to cross-reference your local hardware is out of date, or if the HBAs are found to be not be on the hardware compatibility list. It's also important to note that the information generated here is also available in the vCenter web client, which may be the preferred method for most people. But you can see here, everything's good. Details on the test are below. So if you want to understand which HBAs are being used, um, which version of ESX you're on, drivers in use from each HBA, so just a quick way to tell that. Now the last command that we're going to discuss today is vSAN support info command, which acts as a method for us to capture logs from the perspective of RVC. This command is particularly useful if you have a vSAN case open with VMware support. Um, but we're going to speed up the video today as it takes typically around a minute to 10 minutes to, to generate and collect the information that we need. So the command is vSAN support information. And we just let it do its thing. And when you're running this, you'll notice that some of the commands it runs are, are commands that we have already run earlier on in this video. All right, so we can see our total runtime was 50.85 seconds, so just under a minute. Uh, it's a relatively small cluster, so it's expected that it wouldn't take as long, but in bigger clusters, anywhere from the 15 to 20 node range, we would expect to see much larger results as we are, have more data points to query. So this concludes our review of tips and tricks with RBC. Please subscribe to our KBTV YouTube channel and support Insider Blog to stay informed of future video tutorials. Thank you for choosing VMware support.